Hello, I'm Pierce Brosnan. And I'm Keely Shea Smith. We're here on behalf of millions of citizens from around the world who are concerned about the ever-increasing proliferation of high-intensity underwater sounds throughout the world's oceans. These sounds are emanating from air guns used in seismic surveys for oil and gas exploration, military active sonars, large ship engines, and underwater demolition. Scientific research has shown that loud underwater sounds can kill and injure fish, whales, and other marine life. Several recent studies show harmful effects on fish from exposure to air guns, including auditory damage, eye hemorrhaging, and decreases in commercial catch rates, further endangering an already depleted world food supply. Scientists have also linked active sonar trials to mass strandings and deaths of whales around the world, including the Canary Islands, the Mediterranean, Hawaii, and the Bahamas. Yet the U.S. Navy and NATO continue to develop and test high-intensity active sonars without using common-sense measures to protect whales and other marine life. Moreover, the Navy's own research shows serious adverse effects on human divers exposed to loud underwater sounds. The film you're about to see shows the harm caused by these deadly, man-made underwater sounds and what's at stake if we fail to act responsibly. The U.S. Marine Mammal Commission, the European Parliament, the World Conservation Union, the International Whaling Commission, and prominent scientists from around the world all agree that something must be done to protect marine life from harmful noise pollution. We call on the United Nations to take the lead in regulating underwater ocean noise to ensure the safety and health of our oceans and all marine life. While ensuring the health and safety of ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. The world's oceans, so poetically described as the silent world by the renowned ocean explorer Jacques Cousteau. On the surface, our oceans seem so vast, so endless, and the bounty of life they contain seems forever abundant. But below the surface, a crisis is brewing. According to recent studies by the Independent Pew Oceans Commission and the Federal U.S. Commission on Ocean Policy, nearly 30% of the world's coral reefs are dead. Over 80% of the krill, which forms the basis of the ocean's food chain, are gone. Over 90% of the world's large fish, gone. Of the fish that remain, scientists warn that many species are unhealthy to eat because they are loaded with mercury, PCBs, dioxin, and other contaminants. The great ice packs in the Arctic and Antarctic are melting and breaking apart, and many species of great whales have yet to recover. The culprits? Global warming, overfishing, continued whaling, invasive species, habitat loss, chemical pollution. And as if all this isn't bad enough, now deadly man-made sounds are invading the silent world. The silent world is actually anything but silent. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, natural sounds like the hauntingly eerie yet beautiful songs of whales filled the seas. But today, they are being droned out by man-made noise. This ever-increasing array of synthetic sounds are coming from ship engines, air guns used in oil exploration, and seismic surveys, military active sonars, and underwater demolition, all of which are filling the seas. The problem with all these man-made sounds is that some are so loud and intense they can injure, deafen, and even kill marine life. In a study conducted by the Smithsonian Institute, all known recorded mass strandings of beak whales have been correlated with naval maneuvers taking place in the areas where the strandings occurred. The late 1980s in the Canary Islands, Navy sonar tests coincide with whale strandings. No definitive link is found. 1996 in the Mediterranean, NATO sonar exercises in the area of more whale strandings. The science journal, Nature, argued there was a link 
NATO took a neutral stance. Now, the Bahamas case. The important difference here is there are mammal specimens to study and to hope for some solid answers. The U.S. Navy says elements of a carrier battle group like this one were in a deep water channel off Great Abaco, a channel where whales and dolphins thrive. Six ships, the Navy says, were conducting sonar exercises on March 15th. The strandings happened all around the exercise area. The strandings were so extraordinary, Dr. Darlene Kenton, one of the world's top experts on the anatomy of whales, flew in from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in Massachusetts. I saw bleeding into the inner ears. I saw some hemorrhages in some of the tissues that are pressure sensitive, that are sound sensitive. In the years following the Bahamas strandings, local whale researcher Dr. Ken Balcom has not sighted any of the 35 beaked whales previously known to reside in the area, leaving him to conclude it is probable that they were all killed by sonar. We don't know uh, that it was the sound from, emitted by these ships um, that caused the trauma. What other sounds could have caused that? Other kinds of sounds that can cause such trauma in the ear of these things is explosions underwater, underwater seismic events, things of that kind. But there's no record? No, no, there, we, we, we have not located any such a thing going on in that channel. So the only unusual sound in that water that day was, was the sonar. Sonars. That's correct. Pretty suggestive. Yes, it is. Since the Bahama strandings, there have been several subsequent strandings connected to underwater sonic events. In 2002, Baja and the Canary Islands. In 2003, the San Juan Islands. In 2004, Hawaii, and again, the Canary Islands. And in 2005, North Carolina and the Florida Keys. The search for a cause still has not ruled out sonar from the submarine in the Keys at about the time of the stranding. What exactly is it that sonar can do to marine mammals. Sonar sends out a pulse of acoustic energy. If that acoustic energy is intense enough, as the newer, more powerful sonars are, in the case of a whale, for example, it'll hit the lungs and the sinuses around the ear and any place where there's a gas or air. This is how active sonar can impact whales. The impacts as listed by the U.S. Marine Mammal Commission include death from trauma, hearing loss, stress, disruption of feeding and breeding, and the abandonment of traditional habitats, causing subsequent decreases in marine mammal survival and productivity. Loud underwater sounds also affect fish and other marine life. Several recent studies show harmful effects on fish from exposure to sonar and air guns, including auditory damage, eye hemorrhaging, and decreases in commercial catch rates. Moreover, the Navy's own research shows adverse effects on human divers exposed to active sonar, including dizziness, memory loss, and seizures. Although the U.S. Navy says it needs active sonar to detect silent submarines, they have developed passive sonar systems that can detect these same submarines without harm to humans or marine life. Even in the wake of all this evidence, the U.S. government continues to support the development, testing, and use of active sonars while strongly opposing any international regulation of man-made underwater noise, especially where it concerns the use of active sonar. However, other nations and international bodies, including the European Parliament, are taking a far different stance. Spain has stopped all sonar testing exercises in the Canary Islands, and there is a growing international consensus on regulating ocean noise while minimizing the threats not only to marine mammals, but also to already heavily depleted fish stocks the world over. We call on the United Nations to join this consensus and take the lead in developing the legal mechanisms for the regulation of underwater noise to ensure the health and safety of our oceans and all marine life, while ensuring the health and safety of ourselves. <laughs>